And then on board the Emil Bover A319 heading to Kishinev. According to my app, my bag is still on the ground. There we go then, back on board Air Moldova, next stop, home. It's morning, it's time to go home. So we're heading home today, yay! Um, flying with Air Moldova today, back home to London from here in um, Moscow with a stopover in Kishinev, Moldova. So let's head down and see if we can get checked in for the flight home, yay! The first step today then was to check in, or should I say, try to check in. Hello, good morning. This didn't seem to be quite as easy as I thought though. More staff showed up and I seemed to be causing quite a few issues. Phone calls were being made, documents checked and Google being searched. It soon turned out that there was some confusion over whether I'd be allowed to enter the UK. Was my trip home over before it even began? Would I be trapped like Edward Snowden in an airport hotel in Moscow? As it turned out, no it wasn't. 15 minutes later, I was on my way. Well there we go, first impressions of Air Moldova. They don't have a bloody clue what they're doing. Um, <laughs> but never mind. Finally checked in and head through to Airside now. I've actually, um, I'm actually quite pleased that I've chucked an air tag in my baggage because um, judging by how sort of not very good they were on check-in there I'm a bit sort of concerned that my bag might not make it now so um, I'm glad I've got my air tag in my baggage we'll be checking it as we go through the airport today and making sure it follows us basically so um, yeah let's head through security and um, head to the gate Relieved that I had finally made it through, the next step today then was to hit the duty-free shop and pick up something to give Rach some relief after two weeks of handling the kids solo. needed much needed after that <sighs> stressful check-in there um, essentially what it turned out was that they were under the impression that the UK needed a full PCR test to get in instead of the like lateral flow thing that we have to do um, and I get it it's confusing for everybody and they can't you know you can't expect them to know the rules for every country um, especially when um, you're transiting through a country like Moldova where I guess not many people would take a flight from Moscow to the UK through Moldova, but uh, even still, the whole situation, you'd think they'd have, the airlines would have come up with some way by now of easily verifying, like universally, what the requirements are for every country and whether the passengers have met them or not. It just beggars belief that we're now like 18 months or so into this and still we've got this confusion and chaos reigning at every single airline. There's got to be an easier solution than this, surely guys, come on. But anyway, we're at the gate. I can chill for a little bit because my ride to Kishinev, Moldova, will be arriving very soon. Just check flight radar and it's on its final approach now into Moscow and we'll be arriving right just there. Flight 1 today then was on this Airbus A319, delivered new to China Eastern in 2002 before spending a long time flying for Frontier in the US. Air Moldova took delivery in May 2017.
aboard the Air Moldova A319 heading to Kishinev in Moldova. I've been wanting to go to Kishinev for so very long um, and Moldova, but with COVID and everything, it's just been put off like three times. So this is the best I'm gonna get for now, flying on Air Moldova, connecting through Kishinev back to London. Um, they actually wanted like, I mean, I'll tell you the price of my economy class C later on, but they actually wanted like five times the price on this flight to go and sit up the front in business class, which is basically just a Euro business class with um, the middle seat blocked off on a standard economy seat. And I was like, yeah, it's not worth like over a thousand pounds or whatever it was for, um, for that really, um, when you can pay a much lower price to sit back here. So, um, and it's not too bad. Leg room is decent enough. It's a two hour flight, it's typical sort of Euro business class. Not massive, masses of leg room, but it's okay. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a really busy flight today down to Kishinev. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting in the sky. <laughs> Okay, so tracking my luggage with my air tag, and I have to say I'm a little bit concerned because one minute ago it was um, sort of half a mile away on the other side of the airport, and they've just brought a load of bags over to load. But as of yet, my bag still appears to be right across to the side of the airport, so whether or not it's going to make it, I don't know. This is going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> My phone has just dinged and said that my luggage has now been found with me. So it looks like it's in one of those um, containers out there. So that's good. So we know it's made it on the flight. Phew, at least it's made it as far as on the plane. Let's see if, <laughs> if it makes my tight connection over in Kishinev. We'll find out. I am up over. This is on you now, guys. Flight today then took us southwest out of Moscow to cross Ukraine before descending into Kishinev, Moldova. Flight time today was 1 hour and 36 minutes, cruising at 38,000 feet. So airborne from Moscow saying goodbye to Russia, for this time at least. Um, I'm heading home and I'm looking forward to it actually. I love Russia, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. It is incredibly exhausting travelling around Russia. Uh, and I'm um, just really glad now to be on the home stretch on the flight back to London via Kishinev. Um, and it's a beautiful day for flying, isn't it? Look at the weather. So I'm not entirely sure what service we're going to get on this flight. So far they've just come around with a bottle of water. So we'll see. 
probably get anything more. It's only like an hour and a half flight this one, so I'm not expecting a massive amount more. It'll be interesting to see what we get on the next one because that's quite a little bit longer than this one. So we'll see. So they just announced there is a buy on board service today um, for sandwiches and drinks and things. I'm not going to do it on this flight because to be honest I'm on this blooming intermittent fasting thing at the minute. Um, which means I can't eat for about another hour anyway so I might as well wait until I get on the next flight up to Stansted. Um, but um, yeah they got sandwiches and snacks and things like that, it's not too bad. Kiev, Ukraine. Yay. It's been a while since I've been to Ukraine actually, and to Kiev, so um, yeah, I should really head back there at some point. Lovely city, stunning from up here as well. Beautiful city to visit. So then top of descent down into Kishinev, we'll be on the ground in around about 15 to 20 minutes. Let's go. until our flight to London departs, so <sighs> time to get a wiggle on I think. Right, so I've come to a door and it's locked. Hmm. Just hope somebody comes and lets me through. pretty straightforward wasn't it? Straight through to the departure lounge and um, it took about five minutes to get through the transit lane so not bad at all just hope my bag has made it. Um, I'll check in a minute and see where it is um, on the Find My app but um, oh so far so good. Not, not a bad little airport this actually here at Kishinev. Um, a bit nicer than I was expecting to be honest. I don't know what I was expecting but it's nicer than I was expecting. But anyway we'll be getting on board in the next few minutes I suppose and then on our way back to London. Look, look, look at this look. An actual queue, not people just running and crowding the gate.
Right, here we go then, back on board here, Moldova on another A319. Um, this one's not painted in their full colour scheme, but I must say I'm very impressed with the efficiency of the connections here at uh, Kishinev. I was expecting it to be a little bit chaotic, especially with that like really tight 30 minute connection I had here, and um, actually it was dead easy, in and out. I just hope my bag's made it, I'll check in a minute and see if it's on board. Um, but yeah, next stop, home. My flight home to the UK then took us west from Kishinev to cross Ukraine, Poland and Germany before starting our descent over the Netherlands into Stansted. Flight time today was 2 hours and 57 minutes, cruising at 38,000 feet. Right, so update on the luggage situation. Um, as of yet, we are about 40 minutes out of Kishinev and according to my app, my bag is still on the ground in Kishinev. Now how accurate that is I don't know. Last time on the last flight it showed it was with me when it was down in the baggage hold. This time it's not and it's showing it's still down on the ground in Kishinev. So I'm not entirely sure. I mean it could just be that they've loaded it like right at the back of the plane or something so it's out of range of my phone to talk to it locally. I don't know. I hope that's the case. So I really don't want to be dealing with a lost bag on this trip, but never mind. Um, it is what it is, we'll see what happens when we get to London and if it updates. Alright, so we're just about to start our descent down into London and the food's turned up. So I bought a chicken sandwich and a bottle of coke and oh my goodness the crew on Air Moldova seem to be just as um, grumpy as the crew on some of the Russian airlines. <laughs> I've had huffing and puffing and tutting and oh dear but never mind. Um, I've finally got some food so I'm going to actually be able to wolf this down before we land at Stansted hopefully. Um, not long to go and um, yeah we'll be down on the ground. Looking forward to it. While I'm travelling, and even while I'm not, one of the key parts of my tech arsenal is Surfshark. It's a VPN that protects my data from nefarious goings on wherever I am in the world. I have it on my phone, my iPad and my Mac, and it protects my personal information wherever I am. It means I can catch up on Netflix shows such as The Office or listen to my Spotify playlists even when I'm in countries where that's not possible. I just flick on the VPN and I'm browsing the net just like I'm at home. It's also great to let me access my favourite streaming sites on Wi-Fi that may block streaming altogether. Through a VPN, your data is completely encrypted so you can sit and watch your favourite TV shows even at 39,000 feet. Surfshark are offering you an 83% discount and 3 months free when you use my promo code Noel Phillips at the link on the screen now. So as we get closer to Stansted, I'm actually starting to get a little bit nervous. Um, I'm sure that you will have seen, as I've seen, um, over the last few weeks or so, um, at the time of making this video, there's been loads of stories of like horrendous queues at the main airports coming into the country, into the UK, um, like two, three hour long queues at Heathrow, um, as well as the other London airport being reported in all the press. So I'm kind of a little bit nervous as to what it's going to be like when we get down there, to be honest. It's going to be interesting to see 
if it really is as bad as the media have been telling us or whether or not it's like okay I don't know we'll see when we get down there I'm not really sure of course my other concern is that my bag is still showing us on the ground in Kishinev uh, so it would be nice to know as well when we get down there if my bag's made it on the same flight as me um, and we'll find that when we get down on the ground but we're just over the North Sea at the moment starting our approach down into Stansted My flight from Moscow to London cost me £142.74, working out at 7 pence per mile. Compared to the direct flight, this is around a quarter of the economy fare charged by BA and Aeroflot on the same route. I wouldn't however pay the price they charge for business class on Air Moldova, they wanted over £1,000 for exactly the same seat and a sandwich. Hello, Mr. Mark Phillips. Hello, you alright? Nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, good to meet you. How are you? Not bad, sir. Yeah, good time. Good glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Glad to be back now. It's been like two, three weeks now. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I used to be watching on Insta then and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Well, nice to meet you anyway. Yeah, awesome. See you later. As always, I'd like to say a big thanks to my patrons. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live weekly Zoom calls with me, and much more. So back in the UK after my mammoth trip around the former Soviet Union and my flight back home with Air Moldova and, and Air Moldova let's be honest they weren't that great on board however I was quite impressed um, with their service on the grounds and how fast and convenient that connection was through Kishinev Airport like a 30 minute connection I, I didn't think I'd make it let alone my bag and yet here we are both of them are here uh, me and my bag so that's fantastic and getting back here well the queues weren't that bad it took about 40 minutes to get through that massive line they were working pretty quickly even though they were checking everybody's paperwork um, and the officers there were friendly as always always really nice when you get back from a trip to have like a friendly face meeting you off the plane um, and through the airport let me know what you thought to Air Moldova down in the comments but in the meantime as always thanks for watching take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.